Welcome to Groove Tracks 2023, a more focused grooving session. I'm Kurt. And I'm Tim. We have a cool groove track for you, and I can't wait to get started. So, Kurt, what is our topic today? Today, Mr. Hulhan, we are going to talk about why it takes more than willpower to achieve your goals. So we're going to talk about the role that environment has, about how routines play into goal achievement, and how kind of we can use tools to achieve this goal achievement dance. I like that. I like that. Okay, so this sounds a little bit like a jitterbug on a boogie woogie. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 bit into the dance part there. I see. All yeah. right, all right. Yeah. So let's right. let's start with the with the willpower myth. All right, and so okay. just to to start off, um, common belief is that willpower is something that people often have or they don't have. And if you're failing at achieving your goals or doing things that you want to achieve, the problem is is obviously that you just don't have enough willpower and that you need more willpower to achieve. And you, you blame the lack of willpower on all your failures. And, and that's, uh, that's why you're, you're not getting the magic entry into the dance hall. As we like to say, if we're going to go on that dance metaphor. You're, you're going to, well, I like the metaphor and l let's also note up front that, uh, there in the literature and in the research, there's sort of two sort of competing, uh, relatively speaking, ideas around willpower, right? And and so maybe let me start just by first saying that the common one, which I think has been around for a while, or one of the common ones now, is that we have a fixed tank of willpower, that there's a certain amount of fuel, and that every day we wake up with a certain amount of fuel of willpower and that, you know, by evening, we just keep draining it and draining and draining until we have no more willpower. And, and that's that's inherent to who we are. Right. It's, that's it's, right. right. It's our, 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 our fuel tank is our fuel tank. OK, that's right. That's right. OK. And the second one is that willpower is more of a muscle. It's not not so much a tank. It's more of a muscle that we uh, we can exercise and improve. And if one uh, and it, like a body has many muscles, if one muscle gets fatigued, there's going to be another muscle that can actually pick up the the slack for us. And and so again, with the the muscle metaphor, this idea that a you know muscles get tired after after use, but if you train them, you can build those muscles up so that they get better and stronger in various different pieces. Is that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all in all, though, I think it's fair to say that it's a complex story. Yeah. Right now, there are these two competing camps, but the answer is willpower is a complex issue. Yeah. And I think, again, from our perspective, as we think about this, we can, um, willpower itself isn't enough. And when we look at the the literature that's out there, I think the the more pieces that are coming out today is saying that, hey, you know, when we look at the people who are highly successful, it's not necessarily that they have more willpower, but they're doing other things. And so this is where we're talking about the environment, the context within which you find yourself and setting that context up for success, the routines and habits that you have, and how do you use tools in order to help you with those routines and habits and various different things. And so that's what we're going to talk about I think in this. So, well, get us get us started with the environment uh, context issue. How how do you see that playing out? Yeah. So, you know, when we think about context, uh, one of the things that I think is really important, and I think both Richard Thaler and Danny Kahneman talk about this, right, is that you know to change a behavior, to do a behavior, you make it as easy as possible, and to do that, you set up the environment. And I think you have an uh, you have an example about your your mother, right? Oh, Is that yeah, I've talked about this a bunch. Yeah, my mom used to eat popcorn, you know, every night, almost every night, and she would say, "You know what? I got to stop eating popcorn after after eight o'clock." And if I just had the willpower, I could stop it. But but if we trace that behavior back, she would actually. It starts by going to the store and buying the popcorn. Yeah, <laughs> right. If you take the popcorn out of the house, then then you don't have to worry about the willpower, you know, uh, decision. You change the environment by making one small decision in a cool state, of course, uh, at the grocery store, rather than uh, in the hot state of man. It's been a long day. I think I really would love to have some good salty buttery popcorn. So again, that's similar to the, the what I've talked about about moving my Oreos, right? I mean, always best, great. Yes, the best example of, of changing the environment is not to have Oreos in the house. But the right. second best is saying, 
all right, well, instead of having the Oreos at that cupboard where I look and I see them and they trigger some of that uh, like, oh, craving for those Oreos, I just move them down to the basement. So I totally love that example because really this is about making it easier to do the behaviors that you want to do in order to achieve your goals. So Yeah, and and researchers Mazich and Rona in 2005 addressed this specifically with this idea of making the right behavior easier and the and the wrong behavior hard. They have a great paper on that and we don't have to get into all the details on it, but it's really about let your environment be an ally, right, right, to to create your more successful experience, and it life. doesn't always have to be the, like the negative of of restricting you from doing something. It can be making your environment a ally with you to help you do something. And uh, you know, there's the story of the guy who wanted to learn guitar, and so you know, he would come home from work and he would just sit and watch TV when really, you know, and then he gets stuck in that. So instead, he just basically moved the TV into another room and he put his guitar next to the couch. And again, that that is about setting up your environment for success. So those are things. And again, as we think about this, and if we're trying to overcome, you know, and achieve our goals as get as we say that dance of, of a goal achievement, then what we want to do is we want to be aware of our environment, that physical environment, and what are those factors that are impeding um, some of this. So, And along those lines, Kurt, there are unconscious aspects about our environment. And it, it makes me think about uh, the, the research that Gary Latham did with the fundraising organization. I think it was a school where the students are calling alumni to make, to earn, you know, to uh, get donations. But through a priming effect, through just a watermark on the script, the, uh, the students that that saw the watermark raised like 40% more money. And I think in that case, everybody thought they were doing their best. Right. right? Like they were exerting as much willpower as they possibly had over the situation that they, they could imagine. At the same time, there was an unconscious liberator to willpower, if you will, because the 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 watermark actually helped those the, that one set of students do much better. And and I will take this to the next level and talk about clutter as we think about willpower. And mm -hmm. there's research again by Stephanie McMahons and, and uh, Sabine Kastner who talk about this idea that clutter is distracting. And so again, setting up our environment, the desk my desk is actually probably way too cluttered for really for me to be effective. And it 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 shifts our brain again at that unconscious effect into this multitasking mode, which uh, is kind of incompatible with focusing. So I think uh, uh, McMahons and Kastner said interactions of top down and bottom up mechanisms in the human visual cortex found that too much clutter causes us to rebuild the relevant part of our environment from the bottom up rather than using our categorical uh, higher level organizational tools to to get things. Yeah. A lot of big words basically saying, look, you're going, you're pushing yourself into this multitasking mode, which again, from a willpower perspective, if I'm trying to focus, I have all these other factors that are try pulling me out of that focus. So, you know, and I'll kind of tied to this idea of focus, there's been a lot of work recently uh, in recent years about who we hang out with, right? The people that we're spending our time with influence us in very powerful ways, right? There's that normative social influence. Like we are constantly, constantly and unconsciously looking to others to see what we should do. Yeah. So right? it's not and, just this, this physical environment, it's our social environment has a huge impact on that. Yeah, the the normative um, social influence, you know, the five people that you surround yourself with, all of those types of things. And you think about this, you also think about social conformity. You think of this mm -hmm. idea of like what you're doing is, is impacted immensely um, by those that are around you. So do you hang out with people who are big salad eaters or big burger eaters? <laughs> It makes a difference. It makes a difference in what you I, eat. I, I know. Do you hang out with those people who, let's go to the bar on Friday night? Or do you hang out with the people that, hey, let's go out and, and play a game of Frisbee or do something active, right? right. Those are going to make huge differences in my uh, goal of losing 10 or 15 pounds. Um, that's kind of the thing that we have to take into account 
is that the people that we hang out, the social environment, and that doesn't necessarily, we're talking like eating in different pieces, but it also gets into mental states and other factors that go into that. So, all right. So, so physical and uh, social social. environment have a big influence. All right. So, so what can we do? Yeah. So it's about changing your environment, right? It is, I think it starts with becoming aware it, it starts by paying attention to what is our environment actually doing to us or with us and how is it influencing us. And that starts by kind of a visual uh, taxonomy of what's my world like? Yeah. You know, do I have do I have the Oreos in a big bowl right next to the uh, the couch next to the remote control in front of the TV? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it starts with, with we have to start with that awareness, as long as that awareness is going to lead to taking some action to make some modifications. So the second step of this is being aware, understanding, taking a real hard look at that environment, but then going to the next step and changing it. And physical environment is one thing. You know, you can move those Oreos down or you can not buy the Oreos when you're in the store. And if you're conscious about that, and again, you know, set up some some elements in order to help you with that, which we'll talk about later in routines and different pieces. But then it's it's making sure that you change that environment. Social environment is always harder. But again, yes. being aware of that. And I think the last piece on that, Tim, is that uh, it's not a one and done piece that we need to come back and we need to reexamine our performance on this and how we're doing. So that's a great recap for uh, for thinking about the environmental and contextual aspects. The second thing we want to talk about is routines. Kurt, why, why, don't, you, why don't you tee that up? Yeah, so routines provide a structure or a reminder to do a behavior, right? This is uh, this idea of creating habits. And again, habits uh, and routines, on, in my opinion, are on a, on a continuum. We won't go down that rabbit hole today, but this idea that our willpower, you know, we don't have to depend upon willpower if we set up routines and have habits. They're all, all of a sudden, the behaviors that we want to do are being done because we have the routine in place. And doesn't Wendy Wood say something like 70% of, of, all, of our day, of our waking hours is routine? Yeah. It's, it's, ha- it's habit. So if we are thoughtful, and intentional about the routines that we create, we have a much better chance of, again, organizing our life in a way that we don't have to rely on willpower. Exactly. And this idea of creating these routines and these habits. And so we we need to make sure that we fit them into our life and be purposeful about them. This isn't something we we have routines in our life that uh, just have come because that's the way that we yeah. work, right? In various different pieces. So again, it's going back and taking a hard look at what are the things that we do every day at certain times or when certain cues happen and then understanding what those cues are and being purposeful about saying, all right, the behavior that I'm going to have after this cue is this the appropriate behavior that I want or is this a behavior that I need to change? So where does friction come into this? What what role does friction play in uh, in inhibiting our ability or in improving our ability to develop those habits and routines? Yeah, so again, we always talk about reducing friction when there is a desired behavior. So if I know that I wanna go for a run in the morning, one of the things I can do is set out my running clothes the night before. That yeah. reduces the amount of friction that I have in the morning in order to get up and do that. However, if I want to impede a behavior, then we add friction in. So again, it's the moving the Oreos. I hate to keep going back to that example, okay. but it's a that is you're, you're adding friction into the thing and it pauses me and I have to then make an extra effort in order to go and do that. I think even interesting is that, you know, when we think about the behaviors that we want, if there is a high friction piece to them, we also can bring in a reward element. You know, we talk about you know, temptation bundling from yes. Katie Milkman and doing different pieces. So going to the gym, I need to, if that's a high friction point for me that I don't enjoy going to the gym, 
how can I reward myself? And this isn't giving myself a big bowl of ice cream afterwards, right? <laughs> you know, this is no, no. this is about the intrinsic reward that we want to get from this. It's the dopamine release that we have. And so making that happen. Yeah. I also am a big fan of uh, schedule blocking and setting up schedule in advance, making that pre-commitment in a in this imaginary future where, where I'm not so busy, you know, to make commitments to I'm going to do this and block time out in my calendar because I, I live and die by my calendar. Yeah. So if I have things carved out, it's going to be much easier for me to actually, you know, act on that. Yeah. And again, going back to the rewards, right? So you can use extrinsic rewards on this. So I wouldn't reward myself like, hey, I get a, I went to the gym today. So now I get to go out and buy myself a fancy new outfit. But you might say, if I achieve my goal of five times going to the gym a week for a month, oh. now I can reward myself with something and you know, matching those appropriately. Other rewards, though, come from like streaks. We know that right. uh, achieving streaks re re releases some dopamine within our brain. And so keeping that streak going. So and with that, we can use um, different tools and different pieces around that. So, yeah, actually, let's uh, let's talk about uh, just to make sure that we've sort of got this idea of, of the importance of routines. Think about um, how we can organize our life with using routines that that actually reduce our reliance on willpower right, right? so start you know uh, this is a, a similar thing as with the environmental aspect start with becoming aware start with actually kind of examining and focus on the things that you want to get done and how you want to do them and how they're going to fit into your life and sort of do an analysis of that i think that that's a good way to start the the better analysis or the better routine process. Right. And understand what those steps to the goal are that you need to do. So mm. if I'm writing, want to write a book, that means I need to write. And so how do I set up the routine to consistently write? And it's not writing a chapter a day. It's writing a page a day or maybe even just two sentences a day. But what right. is it that we need to do consistently and then set up the routine to help? And I think one of the other pieces that we kind of to help in setting up these routines and habits is there are a number of tools out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That help with this. And today is probably 2023. We have a plethora of tools that can help us achieve this from trackers on our on our wrists and watches that yeah. how many steps we're taking in various different things to setting up reminders on our phones to having a journal maybe that you could set up your day and understand what are the things that you need to do might be one that actually helps with uh gratitude and other pieces and setting up the right goals for you. You wouldn't be talking about the brain shift journal, would you? Well, I might be talking <laughs> about the brain shift journal, you know, but but with that, again, to that point, it, this is this is actually important because we did set up brain shift to help identify the right goals for you. Right. Because again, right. as we talk about, we have to fit these things into our life. So helping you identify the right goals and then working through a strategy, uh, how to achieve those goals, and then helping you every single day through the prompts that are there to help remind you of what you need to do that day. Again, taking some of that willpower that I have to remember what I need to do and different pieces away and, and outsourcing that to a tool. And can I just say about brain shift, one of the cool things about the goals that it has and the way that it supports you at achieving your goals, it's not the same damn questions every single day. It's not this, it, it, right, that, that you and, and your team developed it in such a way that the variety is interesting. So there is this idea from week to week, like, well, what's, what are the questions going to be next week? What, what might that be like? And, um, and so it's much more pleasing to have a routine of going and journaling when I'm not exactly sure what questions are going to be posed to me today. Yeah. And, and I don't want this to be an advertisement for brain shift, but I think utilizing tools, again, we have a variety of tools out there. And so you're outsourcing your willpower to a tool. And so yeah. you, you no longer have to depend on it because the tool is doing that work for you. 
And that is the important piece. So again, identify your environment, right? Look at your environment, look at the physical environment, the social environment that you're in, right? With that, understand day in and day out, what are the routines and habits that you do and make sure that you are setting up those routines and habits to achieve your goal, same as the environment. And then utilize tools, utilize the the trackers that we have, utilize cheat sheets, utilize facets that you can use and you know, buy brain shift if you want, but, um, you know, just use a tool to, to make sure that you're taking that willpower effort. You're not having to build up the muscle because you're using, you know, a power lifter to help you lift the weight instead. You don't have to have huge muscles in order to do that. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll have an outline in the episode notes. Yeah. Uh, so, so people can go back and, uh, and we'll check out our references as well. Right. So, but uh, thanks for listening, folks. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And, and hopefully you found some of this information informative. And uh, with that, we hope that you use these tips and tools to go out this week and find your groove. <laughs>